How's it going, my kindergarten friends? I hope that you have been having a wonderful time learning about science at home. I have an exciting lesson for you planned today. So we're gonna go get started. So these words might look familiar to you, or maybe the question mark at the end of the sentence looks familiar to you. I asked you guys this question way back in the beginning of kindergarten. I said, hmm, what do you think you're gonna learn with Miss Millerick this year? What is science? And we had lots of different ideas. We thought that science was volcanoes. We thought that science was plants and animals. We thought that science had to do with weather. And we were correct about all those different things, right? Science is everything that makes the world what it is. Today, what I wanna to talk about is some of the things that we have learned so far in science this year, and then what we are going to learn for the rest of the year in kindergarten. So I made this little chart to help us organize all of the things that we learned and all of the things that we are going to learn. So we know so far the difference between the words living and non-living. We also know that all living things move grow and breathe. We know how old an oak tree can live to be. And because we learned about the life cycle of an oak tree, we know what life cycles are. We read the story, Wangari's Trees of Peace, and we heard about how there were some places in the world where trees were being cut down and how Wangari and all her friends planted seedlings. We learned about some animals and how they find food, the quail, the raccoons, and the woodpecker. And then just the past few weeks, we have been learning about different animal homes or different animal shelters. All of these topics that we know so far are all about living things. And life science is a type of science, but there are many other different types of science, like earth science and space science and physical science. What we are going to learn going into the rest of kindergarten, here are some of those things. We are going to learn about the three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. We are going to learn about snowflakes and how snow is white. We are going to learn about the sun and some of the sun's jobs. And then lastly, we are going to learn about forces like pushes and pulls. But before we move on to any of those new topics, we need to review what that word observing means, right? What does it mean to observe? Well, I'll give you a hint. We observe with our five senses. Our five senses are going to help us observe the world around us, especially when we learn about these new sciences in the next couple months. Let's go over them. Let's think about the different body parts that we use when we are observing with our five senses. So the question says, what body part do you use to hear? What body part do you use to hear? And that is your ear. Remember in the mystery we did a few weeks ago, we learned that if you ever go on a nature walk, you always wanna take some time to listen for some noises. What body part do you use to smell? That's your nose, you use your nose to smell. What body part do you use to touch? That's your hand. We feel all the different sensations with our hands. We feel whether something is hard, whether something is soft, whether something is rough and scratchy, or whether something is silky and smooth, right? That is all thanks to the skin on our hands. What body part do you use to see? Those are your eyes. These are probably the body parts that we use the most in science, right? Our eyes. We learn a lot by looking. And then lastly, you don't really use this one much in school science, but at home, if you're doing something, you might use your sense of taste. What well, body part is that, your sense of taste? That is your tongue. The taste buds on your tongue help you to taste. 
So what you will do today to show Miss Millerick that you know how to observe with your five senses is you will go on an observation walk. Now before you take these materials out, I want you to pause because I'm going to share a quick video with you about a teacher who shows us exactly what to do when we are on an observation walk. So watch this video first. Why don't we get started by using our sense of touch to explore some plants? We can touch plants to learn more about their texture and explore their edges too. Let's see. Let's give this leaf a gentle touch. The top is really, really quite soft. And now I wonder what this edge will feel like. Wow, all of these little V's on the margin, they feel kind of bumpy on my fingers. Really neat. Oh wow, it's so rough and bumpy, and I can see some sort of flaky pieces. Ooh, that's interesting. I bet, oh, it's pretty hard. Oh wow, it's really quite hard. I love checking out trees with a gentle touch. This looks like a great place for us to use our eyes for some good close looking. Let's check it out right down here. I see something so interesting. Do you see it? Some ducks. What do you notice? Think about their color and their shape. What do you think they're doing? Yeah, I think they're eating too. Oh, good eyes. How many of those baby ducks do you see? How big are they? This looks like another good spot to use our eyes. Oh, let's check out right over here. I think I see something interesting. Do you see it? Oh, wow, check it out. What do you notice these geese doing? Yeah, I think they're feeding. Really cool. Excellent observation, scientist. This looks like we can find a great place for listening right in here. some really interesting sounds in there. I definitely think I heard some bird sounds. Did you hear them? I think I also heard some human sounds too. I think I heard an airplane. I love focusing in on the nature of sounds I hear, but we know we'll hear some human sounds too. This looks like a great place where we could use our sense of smell to smell some flowers. And smelling flowers is a wonderful way for us to use our senses to learn more about the plants around us. Let's stop and smell some flowers. Oh, let's give this milkweed a little smell. As long as we aren't sharing this flower with any insect, we can notice a nice sweet smell. Really neat. Also notice lots and lots of insect friends who are also enjoying this flower for its sweet flower juice nectar. Another great way to use our sense of smell when we're outdoors is just to take a nice deep breath and notice the smell of the air. Ah, it smells nice. So in that video we saw a lot of great techniques to use our five senses when we are making scientific observations. What I want you to remember today while you go for your observation walk is that you don't have to just look or feel or smell plants and animals. We learned that you can smell the fresh air. We learned that you might hear things other than animals. You might hear humans, you might hear planes or cars. So I want you to use your five senses today to really try to figure out all of the different sciences not just the living things. So now what you are going to do is you are going to get this worksheet out. It is in your new packet that I sent home. It says observation walk, draw what you observed for each sense. You'll need a pencil and you will need crayons. And the most important thing about this science lesson today is that you can take your observation walk outdoors, but only if you get permission from a grown up. Okay, you can also take your observation walk indoors. You can also observe things indoors. 
and when you draw pictures of these items or these objects that you are observing, make sure that you color them in. I also want you to try to label your drawings. Write the word. Do the best you can to write the word to explain what your pictures are. When you are done, don't forget to glue this into your science journal. I hope you have fun, boys and girls. Bye.